All right. Um, what wh- I'm going to start. Uh, yes. Welcome to another episode of Well, There's Your Problem, which is a podcast about engineering disasters. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking now. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, right. Yes. <laughs> I'm oh, Alice Caldwell Kelly. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. I'm the person who's talking now. And I, you, Justin, you really picked a great one here. Some, a lot of like great dead children content for our comedy podcast. Uh, oh, yeah. no. Our, our guest picked this one. Extremely on I take no credit. That's disappointing. Uh, oh, you, you, you're insulting what? me for not for not having yes. the, How the, could you do this? the foresight to pick a, a disaster with lots of dead children. Adam, <laughs> Bo Paul is going to be a, a fucking riot. Um, I am Liam Anderson. Oh, I am at oh go back, fuck, go what? back, go back. <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. My pronouns are he him. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a clown car. Hi, I'm a guest. I'm uh, Sean KB from the Antifada podcast. My pronouns are he, him. And if you don't like pronouns uh, stated, then die mad, hose. That's all I gotta say. Hmm. Yeah, hose that's, mad, that's, X24. That's, that's, hose that's pretty extremely much mad about pronouns. To be fair, the about of dumb uh, pronouns commentary in the in the YouTube comments has gone way down. So I appreciate uh, those of you for dogpiling on morons. Yes, we have some. We, already, we have some Antifa super soldiers in the chat, and that's you know we always appreciate that. We I think we lent we sent some to you on loan, right? Antifa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's just like fifty guys in black hoodies just in the comment <laughs> section, just hanging out, smoking clove <laughs> cigarettes and just giving beatdowns. Yeah. <laughs> so um. What you're seeing here on the screen, you might notice there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, gray crap here, and then there's a town. Uh, mm. That that gray Wait crap. Wait a damn is... second! Wait a damn second! Did you skip the the the, the one slide? No, oh, no, that, no, that's next. No, no, I did oh, not. That's oh, next. Oh fuck! Sorry. He he, yeah. he fucked up because <laughs> wow. he skipped ahead to it and then he went back. Oh yes. my bad. All right, yeah, let's talk about the dead kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. So yeah. damn, it was pretty pretty. Good yeah. lord. It's pretty fucked up that they just built the town around that giant, like, pile of shit. Uh, no, as it turns out, this pile of shit is not supposed to be there. Oh. Uh, right? right? Yeah, so this is the Aberfan uh, disaster. <laughs> Aberfan is the A- village. Aberfan. Your, Aberfan. Aberfan. Look, this is, where, this is where I get to mispronounce things, but they're not mm. French. They're Welsh. That's true, and it's not <laughs> yeah. racist, because Welsh people are white, mostly. And also, <laughs> Welsh isn't even a real language, so you can mispronounce it however you like. Mm. I'm a I'm a POC, a, a person of Kinwood. Uh, <laughs> so it's a totally. POC, but somehow yeah. it's spelled with like seven consonants in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like six Y's in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but I thought before we begin, we'd talk about a real engineering disaster or disaster in general and that was uh the refing at last night's eagles game yeah mm. let's fucking go all right so uh the the hero uh in the eagles uniform uh being squashed by the menace uh Jidivon Clowney. Uh, how is that is, not targeting it is how is I'm that not targeting to, I, I bet if you let me get there uh, i can explain this um so the the uh, NFL's official explanation was Carson Wentz wasn't giving himself up despite clearly having given himself up, uh, and th- therefore it was not targeting despite the fact that Jidvon Clowney Clowney led with the helmet, which you're absolutely not supposed to fucking do anymore, uh, and the league kind of was just like, oh well, our bad, despite the fact that there were seven fucking refs around the guy, uh, all of whom should have immediately thrown a flag. Judy Von Clowney should have been ejected. He's done this shit before. He had a fucking dirty hit on Nick Foles uh, last season when he was quarterbacking that he got fined forty fucking thousand dollars for. And it's inexplicable that the fucking league can say with a straight face, "Yes, we cl- we care about player safety." When this hit knocked Carson Wentz out of the game and gave him a concussion, like it's it's absolutely ridiculous that the Seahawks are still allowed to even fucking play in the NFL. All the fucking team should be contracted. Paul Allen. 
or the course of Paul Allen should be dug up and shot into the fucking sun. <laughs> I fucking hate Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll's a 9-11 truther, but only for the Pentagon, the coach of the Seahawks. The guy's a <laughs> That's absolute the weirdest fucking possible insane, combination dude. to go dude, with. He sucked at USC. He won one Super Bowl and then blew up the defense because he was too busy trying to glory boy fucking Russell Wilson of all people. Like, Marshawn Lynch. Give the ball to Marshawn Lynch. And then he's like, actually, uh, my brain genius says that we should have thrown the ball uh, against a fucking leaky Patriots defense. And that's why they didn't win a Super Bowl. And that's why they won't fucking win a Super Bowl this year. Javon Clowney's a dirty fucking player. He has been for years. Fucking get him out of the league. Get the whole Seahawks team out of the league. Fuck him. Go Birds. Go Birds. Just, just, yeah, just, just sink birds. Seattle into the ocean. Fuck Seattle. Fuck I, Amazon. Fuck Jeff, Be fuck Jeff Bezos. Paul uh, Allen. Don't forget Paul Allen. Fuck the Washington Post. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah. But <laughs> both really? Washington. I'm, I'm not an uh, Eagles fan. I'm actually a Giants fan, and I didn't watch this game. But it sounds like to me that uh, Clowny should have been the name of the ref. Am I right? Oh. oh. Like the damn clowns in uh, Congress. Yes. I would like it to be known, Sean, that I was at uh, Eagles-Giants uh, week 17. And it was delightful to watch your kinfolk slowly lose their fucking minds, including the guy, like, at least 50 years old in a fucking Lawrence Taylor jersey, talking about how he was mad at us for cheering because he was trying to defend the Giants' pride, like, right in front of his, like, six-year-old child. And then he fell down the stairs as he was fucking leaving. Uh, because, because, dude, because the New York Giants are just the never Trump Republicans of the NFL, and they can all be fired into the fucking sun, too. Fuck Guys, that. we're going to have to move on from this, seeing as how I met Lawrence Taylor uh, when he was still playing for the Giants, and Liam is basically destroying my childhood as we speak. Mm. Uh, would you like to know about his many, many domestic abuse charges? <laughs> dude, this future, future Patreon episode is just the disaster is the NFL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we just let Liam have the mic for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to talk about another uh, three letter acronym that starts with N, though. <laughs> Which is the NCB. Boo! <laughs> but wait so a second. That sounds like it's national something, and we're moisturized leftists. That's so true. If you we, felt my face right now, you would know that it's not been moisturized. I my skin is fucking gross, dude. Do do some fucking skincare, Jesus. No, no, it's it's. <laughs> Liam just spent the last three days working up to this episode by doing the skincare uh, regimen of a coal miner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm Justin just Trudeau, Coal Town Road, furious. Like, nope, 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 not no. I am a good person sometimes. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk a bit about coal mining in Britain, right? Mm. Um, all right, so historically there's been a lot of it, right? Because, you know, that whole industrial evolution thing happened there. Yeah, you, you, you needed, needed to put in the trains and yes. things of that nature. And also heating your house and, like, um, power plants. Know. Yeah, generating electricity. Uh, steel. Not yeah. to mention, if you're a Briton, uh, putting that coal into uh, steamships and going around and conquering and brutalizing mm. the entire world. Absolutely. They also and, sold, and just, just sold, sold a lot of, of it to Santa. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just generally just piling it up in big heaps and setting it on fire for no reason. That was yeah. like the number one entertainment activity until like 1970 in Britain. That was their NFL. <laughs> setting shit on fire and burning it yeah, yeah. like good referee got it back in yeah L less, <laughs> less chance of concussion yeah so um now somehow uh having many coal companies uh all producing the same product uh fucked up right and so in 1946 the national coal board was created right Mm, and this was part of the full... wave of nationalization from the first Labour government post-war. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff was nationalized, oh, amongst yeah. which was the coal industry, right? So we're we have a really progressive, forward-thinking attitude towards coal. Coal is no longer mined for profit. Coal is mined for the people. Mm. Right. Promising. Yes. 
And and so in, in the early days of the NCB, there's like a massive investment in mining infrastructure. British coal becomes the cheapest in Europe because they've increased labor productivity so much. Uh, but then, um, you know, in, in general, like technology started moving towards, you know, maybe we should use oil instead mm. of coal, you know, for things like powering trains or things like, um, what's it? Heating your house. Yeah. Well, there's, right. there's a couple of advantages. You don't, because it's liquid, you don't have to shovel stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. you just, yeah. yeah. Harder to throw your back out. Yeah. You can just get it with a really big straw. And just and it right up. Instead of uh, being in the hills of, uh, in the mountains of a place like Wales, which is nice and peaceful, if you use oil, you can go to adventurous places like Iran and Iraq. That's true. Around. Much more interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is true. Yes. You can have all kinds of uh, interesting adventures, yes. You can have follies, follies. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, with um, with the increased labor productivity that came with modernization of the coal mines, uh, with also reduced demand, uh, that meant there were a bunch of layoffs, and that was from the late 50s to the early 70s, which is when we're going to be talking about... Um, and, you know, this was not popular with the National Union of Mine Workers, um, which was their really big labor union, right? Yeah, really, um, really strong one, too. Like, it was, it was a well-unionized industry, and the, the, uh, the NUM was particularly militant, too. Like, they weren't afraid to go on strike. Oh, yeah. But they, they didn't really go on strike until 1969. That was like mm -hmm. a wildcat strike. Nice. And then in the 70s, that's when the really big strikes happened, but that's after... Um, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, in, in the 60s they had a couple of, like, undeclared strikes, so they sort of rattled the saber and the NCB would, like, <laughs> give them everything they wanted. Uh, but, yeah, no, it, it became much more adversarial pretty much after what we're going to talk about. Let's just say for the sake of this episode, because there's no Arthur Skagel, there's no uh, minor strike of the 80s, there's no Thatcher involved in this, Let's just say National Union of Miners, kings, heroes. Yes. yes. They're heroes of the story. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of Thatcher involved in this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She's like, uh, she, she haunts the like tail end of this bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, eventually there was like the thing in the 80s when Thatcher broke the union, she closed the mines, everyone was very mad because mm -hmm. this is like a, a widely regarded as a bad move. <laughs> Unless you yes. were a Tory, right? Yeah, um, we, we we don't mine a lot of coal anymore. That was probably inevitable, but uh, the state of a lot of former coal mining communities can be laid uh, firmly at her door. So that's that's why her grave is like a gender neutral bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, uh, if. If Thatcher hadn't done that, uh, it would have ended up like the United States, where our coal communities are strong and vibrant. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, is, that for is sure. Cool. But if, if if only coding had been invented, then all of our miners could have learned to code <laughs> in the sixties. And then nothing bad would have happened. Yeah, Cobalt, they, could have, they, could have, they could have learned how to like punch punch cards. <laughs> What what's coal ball but for coal? Coal co ball. Co -sol. Coal <laughs> ball. <laughs> so, when our story takes place in the uh, 1960s, the NCB is run by uh, a guy named Alfred Robbins, uh, Baron Robbins of uh, Waldingham. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, he's 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 part of that socialist uh, title and nobility pipeline that only exists in the United Kingdom, right? Yeah, and it's one. there was one of the weird features of the Attlee government, was that like you would get uh, these kind of not to put too fine a point on it, but cronies. Not necessarily in a bad way, but like, Alfred Robbins came up <coughs> as a trade unionist, and he was an MP, and then essentially they like decided, hey, to keep you out of politics, do you want to be in charge of national coal, and you'll never have to fight an election again because we'll just make you a lord? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's very I, very weird. That is I weird. Kinda, I, I I I like it, but also I hate it because I'm an American. Yeah, we fought well, in he, a war. He literally about this. like we created kind of a labor aristocracy. One of the things he did was 
the f- I think the first thing he did as head of the National Coal Board was get a private plane and a limo with the uh, the license plate NCB1. So Jesus fuck. Nice. Dude. Be <laughs> yeah, baller. less obvious about it. <laughs> you know, you have that you have that lord system there which obviously, you know, mm-hmm. has very long lineage. In the United States, we have similar signatures and they go to uh, career bureaucrats, wonderful people like Elliot Abrams, for, mm. for example, who's never been out of government bureaucracy or, you know, the think tank apparatus for all yeah, these... Yeah, but at, at least you don't have to call him, like, your majesty or something. Yeah, his, <laughs> his dick would get so hard it would explode the rest of his body. <laughs> Also, I just want to take a quick break. There will be a Donald Trump rally in Wildwood, uh, New Jersey, uh, this month. So expect that bonus content for when we get beat up at a at a Trump rally in Wildwood in January. Mm. I, I don't want to get beat up oh, at a you're Trump going. rally in oh, Wildwood. You're going. <laughs> don't worry, guys. We'll send troops. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Crack operators. Mm. Uh, all right. So um, let's talk about the mine in Aberfan, which is actually the, what is it, like the, the Murthy Murtha Vale. Murthy it's, Vale it's, it's just, Colliery. It's just Murtha, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. It's, it's named, the, that whole region is Murtha, the town down the road is Murtha Tidville, which is the, like, most miserable place I've ever been. Uh, just dismal. You think it looks bad there, uh, 30 years of deindustrialization have not been kind. The wiki page is giving me a Ooh, a hint to how yeah, fucking sad it, you it start, is. You, like, nice you look, castle. Mm, you, well, you look at a picture of Merthyr Tidville like an ordinary like street scene, and you just start kind of like itching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, this is a shaft mine, right? So you know mm-hmm. you go down the hole, you dig some tunnels, right? You send the coal back up, and you come back out of the hole at the end of the day. You know. Yeah. And, uh, you have the stylish like yeah. uh, pit heads there, so uh, oh yeah, uh, you know you you have like a a nice tower with a big wheel going round. That's very aesthetic. Uh, yes, and this is uh, of course opposed to like a big open pit mine, right? Like hmm. those one ger- those big German ones. Although those don't actually exist because the Germans only use renewable energy, as we know. <laughs> oh yeah, um, <laughs> absolutely a true thing that I believe. Yes. Hmm. Just, so, where, where did these giant holes come from? Unexploded your... ordnance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be exploded ordnance nope, at that point. Nope, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, one of the late war allied plans, just to drop a bomb so big that even when it doesn't detonate, it just buries itself <laughs> and creates a lake. The thing about mining in real life is that it's not like Minecraft, right? Oh, it's Jesus. not. You, yeah, no, you can't. You can't like just store all the cobblestone in chests, right? Mm. You got to put it in big piles outside, right? Right. So this is what you call. Well, what if someone steals it? Uh, good. Uh, you don't mm-hmm. want this stuff. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, mining produces overburden or spoil, and that's you know all the stuff that isn't the coal or ore you're digging for, right? Hmm. The Dirt. Yes, the dirt, right? And so this is stored in something called a spoil tip, right? And the um the spoil tip again is just a big pile. Um, you know, and spoil or overburden is different from tailings. Tailings are a different thing we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but tailings are the waste left over after processing of, you know, your coal or your ore. That's usually really nasty and highly toxic, right? Um, it's not just dirt, uh, mm. and there's a lot of that that needs to get stored too. Um, cool. yeah. It, so, mining doesn't sound very, like, good for the environment. Like, as just it to, turns just out, yeah. <laughs> Resource extraction is pretty nasty in pretty much, uh, all industries, yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, we just gotta get Elon Musk to, like, mine out of asteroids, and then it'll be fine. I, I heard of it. Just fucking depressing. I heard of this great, this this asteroid he had his uh, eyes on, uh, called um, uh, what is it like? Grimes. Like Thirty thirty six seventy four <laughs> Bolivia. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh 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 
there was a coup there. All right. Hmm. So anyway, um, Evo Morales is the correct and rightful president of Bolivia. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, these big piles, these spoil tips are usually pretty stable, right? Because they're just, you know, a heap of racks, right? Sure. But they can be affected by soil conditions, water content, so on and so forth, right? Um, just put a tarp over it. It's fine. That's fine. Big, big, uh, big tarp. Big, I mean, yeah. that's that that's that is a solution actually like that that is something you can do <laughs> <laughs> i hate when i'm like come up with a dumb joke and it's an actual like, you know, it's like no yeah. actually that's something Reality they do yeah he is worse and less funny yeah am i the only person on this podcast who's actually uh worked with spoil before uh i think so yeah uh, okay cuz i yeah i i work in uh heavy union construction if people don't know and uh when we are excavating and when we are drilling for deep foundation work, we got spoil all over the place, man. I feel like I'm back at home here for this podcast. <laughs> it's very, very exciting. Although because I work in New York City and absolutely everything is fucking polluted, spoil is not just something that ruins the landscape. It's also something that will basically give you cancer within like two, three years. Oh, so, uh, yeah, okay. everything's yeah. polluted. Everything's bad. I don't know about the, these. These spoils look uh, nice and pristine and non-carcinogenic, uh, though. So maybe nobody will die in this episode. I've, yeah, I've had, I mean, I, I I think the the actual like ground in Wales is fine because like there's not big cities or anything. That all of these mining towns are, like five thousand people at most, and all they do was like all they did anyway was like <coughs> mine coal. So it's not like there's a lot of other stuff going into it. So unlike um, Brooklyn and Queens, they didn't just dump like 150 mm. years of PCB and oils and other chemicals into the yeah, soil. Yeah, I don't. Sounds think weird, but okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cowards. I put on my ha hazmat suit just for this episode, but I guess I take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the mic quality is bad, it's because it's inside the like Tyvek hazmat yes, suit. Yes. <laughs> We're doing our best. Sean is doing his best. <laughs> so we got to talk about the uh, Mirtha Vale Colliery spoil tip number seven, right? Mm, which such I a romantic location. I know, right? I I just realized I don't know which of these it is. I think yeah. it's sort of this in the middle here. The one that looks right. ominous, baby. The ominous. Yes, yes. No, the of ominous one. The ominous one. God damn it. As of 1966, when our story begins, Spoil Tip 7 was the only one in use, right? Because they filled the other six, right? Like, it's just a big pile of dirt, and after a certain point, somebody's like, eh, the pile of dirt's getting pretty big, we should do another one. Yes. Yeah, what's the criteria for, like, changing tips? They're just like, eh, I think this one's good. I, 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 think, that, I yes. think that's basically going to be it. There's going to be a guy from the mine who just kind of, like, looks at it and goes... Yeah, it's looking a little big. We should probably start another one. Yeah, the tip inspector. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Just yeah, the tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want anything else, inspector? That's got to go to another union. Uh... <laughs> yeah, the the International yeah. Brotherhood of Tip Inspectors <laughs> <laughs> unionizes mine workers and sex workers. <laughs> real, real crazy parties. Nice. So, yeah, so this was uh, on the western slope of the valley where. Aberfan was located just above the village. You can see the village down here. Mm. If you if you can see my mouse going, also yeah, I apologize so there's no, for my like... activate Windows thing down here. <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to point that out. I do yeah. have a legal copy of Windows. I just can't sure figure out how do, to get buddy. it on my new computer. <laughs> so so, yes. so to be clear, between uh, the village on the left and the giant like spoil tip on the right, that's that's downhill towards the village. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. I see no problems. No, nah, there's, there's no, good, nothing going to go wrong here. So, this spoil tip in particular was composed of both spoil and tailings from chemical extraction of the coal, right? So it's got the nasty stuff in there, too. It was 111 feet high and had 297,000 cubic yards of spoil. It was sighted on top of a spring. Oh, of good. Course. Nice. Yeah. Well, that, that just means that you get some, like, uh charcoal filtered spring water out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good enough for Jack Daniels, it's good enough for the rest of us cowards. <laughs> if you put it by the patch of mint, you get menthol too, it's great. 
Mm. <laughs> bad jokes, I go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bad jokes podcast. You're fine. Yes. Oh, perfect. Great. Thanks. I'm ready. <laughs> So, in 1963, May of 1963, Tip 7 shifted a, a, a fair amount, right? Then there was a major slide in November of that year, right? And um, the National Coal Board said, oh, that's just a, a tailings run, right? That's because, uh, you know, they're, they're, we put too much tailings on that day and they slid off the side of the hill. It's fine, right? So, so gross, but, like, safe. Yes. So they stopped dumping tailings after that on spoil tip seven, but they kept dumping spoil, right? So it's still getting well, bigger. They were oh, yeah, yeah. for productivity. The more spoiling and the bigger it is, the more uh, the more the NBC is doing well. I'm sure yes. that's true. Yeah. I mean, it's a hell of a lot easier to like look at the big fucking uh, pile of spoil and be like, yeah, that's a lot, than it is to like count. Doing so coal good, wagons. guys. Yeah. <laughs> So there, there had been uh, some long-time complaints from the uh, residents of Aberfan that, you know, they, they were building this big spoil tip, which was located directly above, you know, the elementary school. <laughs> uh, and they were... They were... Just, yeah. They, they I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure the NCB handled this very sensitively and wasn't like, fuck you, move the school. <laughs> Well, they didn't even say they didn't even say to move the school. They just sort of ignored them, right? Hmm. <laughs> Left on red. Yeah. Oh, that's a hard way to go. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, from 1963 onwards, they were complaining about this, and I, I, I believe there was at some point some some agreement that the NCB was going to handle some drainage issues with the. Uh, the spoiled tip, but it, I I don't recall exactly when that was. I think it was shortly yeah. before. But they had the they incident. had to like run off because it was getting into the water table, and so like the bottom of the valley where Aberfan was would flood, and they <laughs> people complained to the coal board that like, hey, not only are our houses flooding, but like this water's bl pitch black and it leaves this kind of greasy residue when it comes down. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Yeah, and the NCB said, Probably okay, fine. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do something about that, maybe. We'll dig, like, a trench. You have to imagine who we're dealing with here, right? It's 1966. Mm, you have a long day at the racism factory. You're yeah. drunk already. Uh, yeah. You're in this town of Aberfan, and you've got this guy coming to town in his, uh, in his limousine. He's wearing a <laughs> great <laughs> flannel suit, right? He is... Uh, a complete officious Methodist prick, and he mm. comes to the town and he looks at the tip, just ponderously <laughs> looking over the uh, elementary school. You complain to him, and uh, he just does a British like stiff upper lip thing, and uh, kind of tweaks you on the nose and walks away. This was like this was state capitalism, right? This is what the kinks were complaining mm -hmm. about. This is what like mm -hmm. the Thatcherites were all complaining about was this kind of. On uh, I don't know unaccountable system that I guess these people in Aberfan are about to find out about. Yeah, Brit Britain's uh, brief experiment experiment with dangism. I, I think you'll find this is actually good and perfect socialism. On all of these people, <laughs> all of these people are good socialists, and we should not criticize them in any mm. way. Yeah, so, so socialism. Socialism is when you get a private limo with a private registration plate, and the more limos you have, the more socialist you are. <laughs> that is true, as we know. Did, we have, did you guys have Aaron Bastani on here? Mm, not uh, yet. No. no. Uh, he's, he's for, for the benefit of Justin and the listener, he's the guy who keeps writing these left takes about how communism means we'll have, uh, we'll all have infinity pools. Yeah, Infinity, Thing, what things now? of that no, nature. No. We're, we're, I... We'll all like have all of our treats and our luxuries because robots will do it for us. Oh, sure. Why not? Sure. Why not? Um, I no. Car park. Yeah, he he is like Elon Musk brackets Marxist, and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's <a> whole mood. <laughs> I happen to be uh, Elon Musk bracket Maoist, so... <laughs> yeah, you're a Naxalite Muskite, yeah. A Muscovite. Mm. I like it. So, 
under the uh, Lords Robbins administration of the National Coal Board, right, there were a lot of coal mines that were being closed if they were, you know, insufficiently productive, right? Because you got this mania for productivity. Plus, oh, yeah. also employing way too many people and coal is kind of like going downhill. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have the contradiction of this like Keynesian consensus of this time, which is that you need to increase productivity, but you also need full employment. And as we all know, organi organic composition of capital, that is like completely at loggerheads with itself. So, mm -hmm. so something yeah, tells yeah. me in the next 10 years, this whole sort of post-war consensus might fall apart. I don't know. No, it's fine. This this is socialism. Uh, you have a strong union, so all of these guys are union thugs, and there's like six different jobs to be like the guy who watches the guy who watches the guy. Uh, and it's yeah, no, it's <laughs> many fine. unions, many yes. Russian doll nesting union. Mm. What a hundred <laughs> unions bloom. <laughs> there was an issue here where the National Union of Mine Workers, or the mine workers who worked in the village, you know, they didn't really want to speak up on the spoil tip safety, even if that directly threatened them, you know, physically, because mm. they worried that if, you know, if, if they have to make some expensive inter interventions into the uh, spoil tip, right, then, you know, maybe Lord Robbins will just close the mine instead of doing the fixes. And they were right. I mean, it, yeah. it, like, th this essentially happened, like, 20 years later to every Welsh and English mining community. So, not for nothing were they worried about this. Um, oh, yeah. Just London really didn't want to pay for a tarp that big. <laughs> I was about, about to say, yeah, that's a that's big good. fucking tarp. You know how much that, that costs, like, that probably costs, like, three or four dollars a square foot. Especially <laughs> those, uh, those uh, inefficient British factories. God. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, have to, you have to call up the National Tarp Board. <laughs> <laughs> Just price control. Guys. Guys. <laughs> yeah, you, you get the tarp five years after the disaster. <laughs> Just like like arrives on a truck. But it was only it was only twenty shillings per square. I guess it would still be <laughs> foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in October of 1966, there were uh, three weeks of heavy rain in uh, Aberfan, right? There was about six and a half inches of rain that was mostly in the third week. Mm. So mm. on the night of October 21st, the soil tip sank nine to ten feet, right? That's and, good. Less, uh, less spoil. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the little tramway that brought spoil up to the top you know, the track fell in the hole that was left at the top, right? Uh -uh. Well, now so I'm the... feeling bad about this, because it killed a railroad. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> a oh. tiny little mine cart, but like... F's F. in the chat, though. F's in the chat. Absolutely. The chat. When the first shift came in the next day at 7.30 a.m., someone found out this had happened, and, the, you know, they, they ran back <laughs> they and said, hey, we another, got... They sent another mine cart down and yeah. just heard a thunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, kept doing that Not for good. an hour. And ran out of mine carts. <laughs> this is how 173 people died. <laughs> thunk, thunk. <laughs> so they, they, they got an inspector out and he was like, okay, we shouldn't use this anymore. Let's start trying to figure out a spot to put a new spoil tip, right? Hmm. Fair enough. Okay. Build another one. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, move it somewhere else. Yeah. About an hour and 45 minutes later, um, that's never a good, spoil, uh, yeah. never good yeah. segue. Oh boy. Spoil tip seven collapsed. Um, now there's a wave of debris about 30 feet high that traveled at 20 miles an hour, uh, down the hill and it just overwhelmed the village of Aberfan, right? Mm. So among the things it smashes was the elementary school, oh. of course, oh, which is just this, this, this building, building over, over here, 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 right? Right. Hmm. Now, you, now you can, you can see, see sort of, sort of excavation, excavation vehicles all around, around here, here, right? This, this is, is a picture taken well after, after the, uh, the, the, the recovery effort had begun. begun you know, you know, when, when it actually happened, happened, this would have been, been much, much deeper, deeper right? right? This this collapse happened about 9.15 in the morning, right? So all the kids who were on time for school had made it in the school by then, right? Um, now, this no, was... Uh, yeah, exactly. Gotta, yeah. Playing truant will save your life. Yeah. I was about yeah. 
kids don't don't arrive on time at school. You know, th- this was a half day too. Yeah, uh, mm. supposed to be it was just a, at noon. Should should not show up for half days. Period. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, in the course of this, um, so you know, one of the first buildings it hits is the school, right? You know, it blows through all the windows, it goes into classrooms, fills the whole place up. 109 of the 240 kids in there were buried alive. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. I was hoping Mm. that you'd say something like, oh, well, just demolish the school, so at least it was fast. But no, you you did not say that. Can't have mercy. No. And there's, like, stories of, like, teachers, like, you know, putting chalkboards in front of doors and, like, trying to shield the kids with their bodies. But, like, you know... They're, they're, oh, cool. this, they killed a lot of people real quick. Um, Man, just fucking like 100,000 tons of spoil coming down at you and you've got a chalkboard. What do you yeah. do? Yeah. Man. There's a, there's a story of, uh, I believe, a, a lunch lady who shielded kids with her body. Uh, and when they, found, they dug her out of the wreckage, obviously dead. Uh, she's still holding a pound note because that was the lunch money. So all the kids involved that she had, you know, sacrificed for it, did survive, but there are, there's more than one story of, uh, of, of, you know, people doing that and just being absolutely crushed to death, uh, oh. by the, the landslide. Well, yeah. I mean, th- this, this wouldn't have happened if we'd armed the teach. <laughs> this is true, yeah, they could have shot the, uh, they could have shot the spoil coming the, down. Yes, yeah. the, the spoil full of bears, yes, thank yeah. you, Betsy <laughs> DeVoe. We've got, a, we've got an active uh, spoil spill um, <laughs> drill. Shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> Yo, I gotta say, man, this is in Wales, but um, if J.D. Vance, who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, was around, he'd be talking about how these 103 c- kids oh, could have been saved if it point. wasn't for um, single motherhood and alcoholism mm. and drug abuse. It's really, the reason these kids died is a problem of culture. It was this well, Welsh hillbilly culture. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's unfortunate dude, they didn't have a crap. coding class. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, apart from anything else, a computer is a lot more like solid and heavyweight than a chalkboard. Easier to hide behind. Right. Smaller area. Yeah, covered, they have though. like they have like big tape drive like yeah. computers, yeah. like you know, and you just shove those in front of the door. Yeah, nothing is getting through like a 50s IBM mainframe. Absolutely fucking nothing. Let's be honest with ourselves. If they had had fancy computers back then, it would have just been the NBC like running algorithms to figure out how many tons of like individual pieces of deadly coal were in the actual tip itself right before it fell down. It wouldn't yeah, have been used true. to save their lives. No, that's what Nick Silver's for, man. <laughs> 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 Nate Silver's second career. <laughs> yeah, Nate Silver mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, I can't wait for someone else to get real mad at us because we made jokes. Uh mm. so sorry to advance or whatever, but also go fuck yourselves. Mm. Yes. Also it's Sean's fault because he picked this one. I was trouble. Yes, I did. Well, the other one that I picked first uh, had zero casualties, and it didn't really land. Lame. That's crazy shit. Yeah. yeah. Also, we'd have to criticize the Soviet Union in it, which we, we don't do because we're, <laughs> no. yeah, we're, we're good leftists. We'd never criticize the Soviet Union. No. We, if, if you know anything about us, it's that we are good tankies. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's us. That's if, if, only, if only the Atlee government had been more Stalinist. <laughs> yeah. If only there had been a sustained program of de <laughs> yeah. in Great Britain. Yeah, none, none of these kids would have been at school. They'd have been fucking in a camp somewhere. Much safer. At least in a mine. <laughs> <laughs> there are casualties in the mine itself, right? So send all those Kulak kids down to the shed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's sticked up. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, 144 people were killed in total uh, while we're making jokes. Um, there were very few injuries. This was something where you either lived or you didn't. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. And then, so, rescue efforts, right? Grim. So, this is another view of the, the school, right? This is from the side. Um, 
you can see uh, a lot of miners coming out, and they're trying to dig people out. The slide broke a water main, right? And um, as a result, the, the spoil tip continued to slowly settle through the village, you know, until about 1130 when the uh, mains were turned off, right? Oh, good. So, um, you, so you're trying to get into this, like, completely wrecked school, and it's still, like, pumping coal slurry at you. Oh, yeah. The thing is like a living hell beast. It's just, it won't die. Hmm. The first miners got there before the emergency services did. They, they showed up about 20 minutes after the slide, and they started digging in like a really systemic fashion so to prevent further collapses, you know, because they're miners. They know how to dig stuff, right? Yeah. Right. Autonomous community, self, whatever. Cool. Yes. They got their best men on the job. And then uh, later on, regular folks started to come to aid in the excavation with shovels and gardening tools, and, and the miners were like, we know how to dig. Go, go away. Go away. Mm, You're yeah. making this worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. O autonomous yeah. community self, whatever. The downside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not that weird that the miners got there first, though, because this is kind of the back of beyond. And, like, yeah. at, at, at this point, the, like, Welsh rural police and, like, emergency stuff is, like, one guy and a dog. So... <laughs> Also, the dog is not particularly useful. It's not like a sniffer dog or anything. It's just like an old sheep dog. Yeah. And it's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> it shows up and falls asleep. <laughs> yeah. I like how Alice is introducing people uh, across the Anglophone world to whales for the first time. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm sure no one will get upset with how I characterize it. Congratulations, you're Britain's Mississippi. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say Long Island actually, but Mississippi is probably kinder. Mm. Aw, Suffolk County. <laughs> as a as a Jewish man, I am actually prohibited by uh, Torah law from insulting the uh, the great region of Long Island, or I assume my rabbi will come down here and beat my ass and ask me why I don't like locks. <laughs> I actually have a thesis about Wales being the Long Island of Britain, but it could wait till later. Hmm. Cut the podcast out. It's just you reciting it. <laughs> <laughs> a three hour bonus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so, just me. <laughs> Alright, so they were they were they they started digging real quick, but no one was pulled out alive of the uh of the pile after 11 p.m. that day, or 11 a.m. that day, excuse me. Um, Jeez, and this happened like 9.30 in the morning when it actually tipped, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. Feels like that's similar to the uh, Lac Magantique disaster, which just kind of keeps going. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's like, either survived or you didn't. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was no. a, a line in the wiki, uh, I think, about the idea that uh, after it had stopped, so did the noise. One resident recalled that quote, in that silence, you couldn't hear a bird or a child. So just Yikes. digging for your possibly dead kid in absolute total silence would, I have no words for how horrible that would be. Yeah. Back to the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Robbins of the National Coal Board. Um, yeah. Was informed of the disaster almost immediately after it happened. What did um, he do to and, fix it? He decided to have oh, a well. Oh, he decided. He decided. Uh, I'm. I'm not going to go, because you know that's going to interfere with the actual rescue efforts. I'm going to go. Um, go be invested as the chancellor of the University of Surrey. Get the fuck. Uh, out of here. Yeah, that's so noble. So he he got to like go to a party and have like a little fucking ermine robe and a cap given to him. Cool. Uh, yes. He could have been deemed the. Uh... Uh, uh, I had a joke about the University of Slurry, but it was really bad, so let's just move oh. <laughs> <laughs> Though, So, he never visited, though Prime Minister Harold Wilson did visit that day. Um, you know, God forbid the, uh, God forbid the National Coal Board guy visits. Well, I, he, he said he want, didn't want to, like, distract from distract the actual experts because he was just some asshole, right? Uh, like Yeah, he, pretty much. Like he was he was a layman or whatever. And yeah, he, he said he was a layman and it's like I I mean you're you're in charge of the coal board, dude. Yeah, you, you, like, if you, you should probably if you're be gonna there. get the the 
special number plate for the limo that says NCB1, you should probably go to the thing. I mean, bitch, anybody can use a shovel. Just put one in your hand and go for it, man. Mm. Coward. If I get a car, I'm going to get a vanity plate that says NCB1. (laughs) (laughs) Just put this on Liam's van. Yeah, Yeah, The most obscure (laughs) reference of all time in America. (laughs) I believe in you. One well spider will try to assassinate you when he sees it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the um uh so so they were still digging through October twenty eighth. That was when the last body was pulled out of the spoil. Um and there was pretty immediately a fund set up for the victims, which uh raised I think one and three quarters million pounds or something like that. Mm. It was a good chunk and of And that's money. in nineteen sixty six. Yes. Yeah, that's good money. That's good 1966 money. Absolutely. Yeah. You could buy a lot of racism with that. Yeah. That's back when you had shillings, too, so everything was mm. worth, like, 21 times as much. And that's before uh, Two-Tone Ska solved racism in Britain. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> also, I have bad news for you, uh, Roz. NCB1 yeah. is not available in Pennsylvania. Someone already has it. Wow. Well, we gotta find that guy. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Justin, uh, if you want that license plate, uh, you're going to have to uh, put it on a shrinking corn cob, because that's what you are right now. Mm. Oh. I don't know if you can register a shrinking corn cob as a motor vehicle. Yeah, an attractive you can, you can no like, register when you have the Wayne mobile, right? Yeah. They retired the, corn the, uh, the Hershey Kiss mobile, so you could buy that. <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, so here's here's a picture from... If you if we look back here, you can see here's where spoil tip seven was, and you can see how far well, down. Well, that that answers he went. your question about which one it was on the last slide with these. This is true. Lord. You can uh, like if you go back to that one, it's like three slides back. Uh you yeah. can get like a a before yeah. and after. Yeah. Yeah, there she goes. That's a lot of spoil. That school day was spoiled. So, uh, in the aftermath, of course, there's a big, big inquiry, and, you know, they sort of place the blame on the fact that, well, actually, there were no safety procedures in place for spoiled tips anywhere in the world. Uh, not just Great Britain, uh, but anywhere. No one ever thought this was a dangerous thing, right? That's incredible. That's genuinely fucking incredible to me. And... Yes. As as the uh, Tribunal of Inquiry said, um, the great bulk of mining operations take place below ground and that most of the best men in the industry are employed there, right? It is there that coal is won and in that direction that the attention of those employed in the industry is naturally turned. Rubbish tips that is are necessary. <laughs> Rubbish tips are a necessary and inevitable adjunct to a coal mine, even as a dustbin is to a house, but it is plain that miners devote certainly no more attention to rubbish tips than householders to do to dustbins. Uh, Justin, we lost Alice. Did we? Yeah, I saw her drop off, but there was a little notification. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh-oh. 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 Let's see if she comes back. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pee real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, that seems dude, wise. Uh, take it the fuck out by a power cut. Just keep going without me. All right. Oh boy. So, uh, Alice well, is dead. Uh, Alice which is means dead. I'm also gonna use the restroom. God damn it, dude! <laughs> All right, since I am the only one recording. Hi, everybody. Welcome to what is now just Liam's disaster cast. Uh, we're all very happy to have you, or I am very happy to have you. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the disaster that is currently my living room, because uh, we currently now have a rowing machine in the middle of that. Uh, and now it is time to read the fanfics on air. Um, talk amongst yourselves while I get these up. Uh, all that being said, actually, I uh, kind of wanted to say a couple things, which is that uh, the uh, please tell me someone else is back. I'm I'm struggling here. I'm back. 
Thank God. I was I was reading the fanfics live on air. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if Alice will have her audio. If, uh, if she was attacked by Iranian hackers or whatever. Not sure. Do we just uh, back? Do we just go on? Was Alice gone for good? I mean, good question. Taken out by uh, power. Uh, she lost power, I think. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's because, like Donald Trump said, in Scotland with the wind farms, you get intermittent uh, electricity. That is true, as we know. Maybe oh, we yeah, should have been going for coal the whole time. Mm, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. The thing that strikes uh, me the most about this fucking disaster is just the absolute, like, I feel like, not uniquely British, but very British kind of callousness about the whole thing. Where it's just... Like people, oh, we're very sorry you're in mourning, but also like, but how are we gonna pay for it? In yes. a way that's just so like genuinely fucking unbelievable to me. This is the society that forty years later uh, did Brexit callously, like you know, just hating on themselves and the world because they were pissed off about it. And the more I think about it, the more I feel like this whole disaster was a kind of uh, preamble to Brexit. It's it's. It's insane in that, like, we'll get into it, but, you know, taking money uh, from the survivors fund that they had raised themselves to pay for the removal, you know, of the uh, of the remaining uh, tips, like shit like that. Do- yeah, exactly. And, it, and they had to pay it back like many years later. But just I don't understand how you can like, like at some point it's like, oh, we don't have any money. It's like you're the fucking prince Tom. like you're the government. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're the you government make the money. Yeah. you make the money you make it exactly Fucking literally like oh my god so uh no one is found to be at fault for this uh disaster personally but the national coal board is found to be at fault generally and has to pay out compensation to victims right and they they wound up trying to pay out 50 pounds per child get yeah, the i fuck fucking out. saw that get the fuck out of here and and later they 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 increased that to five hundred pounds. Fuck you. Would you like to know how many uh, like fifty pounds? What is this? Nineteen sixty six. Yeah. Yeah, seven hundred eighty two pounds. Fuck you. You're talking maybe a thousand dollars per kid. I mean, it's I, like, I that's what I'm talking about. Just the absolute fucking unbelievable callousness of the shit. Like, that doesn't even come close to burying somebody. You could buy an Xbox for your other kid. <laughs> Well, that is a good point. <laughs> Justin is voting for Andrew Yang, by the way. <laughs> if you just have a kid killed every year in a spoil collapse, it's like a uh, Yang bag. You know, it's like that thousand dollars a month or whatever. <laughs> Freedom dividend. Yeah, Fucking yeah. The, thing. Those neat book bucks for nephew entombed uh, and <laughs> entirely, entirely, yeah, and entirely in in spoil tip. <laughs> so that's what that stood for. I never knew. Yeah, yeah. It's All a right. Britishism. All right. So, uh, Lord Robin got the uh, the the whole report about ten days before the media did, or any of the public did, right? About this whole incident, and he decided to spend that time traveling around the country to uh, campaign for the virtues of coal. And coal power, and how coal was what made Britain great. Oh, that's bold. and also to that's fear monger about. Uh, he was Joe Manchin, you know. Yeah. He was Joe Manchin of the Labour Party, and, and also to fear monger about nuclear power, which was increasingly popular in Britain at that time. Oh man, he's not on your good side, is he? Mm. 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 <laughs> All right, so they they finally drew up some safety regulations around spoil tip design after this, and. The spoil tips were removed at Aberfan. It was a little complicated by the fact that spoil tip five was on fire. What? Um, sure. I I I mentioned I I read this in the report. Um, I couldn't do a search to figure out when it caught fire. I assumed it had been on fire for a long time. As happens, it's just normal. Everything's fine. Yeah. This is great. Stuff catches fire sometimes, and sometimes it just doesn't go out. Yeah. We should go to Centralia. It's, it's um, like uh, 50 million year old uh, dinosaur bones that just seem to want to burn forever. It's fine. On the bright side, when they increased it to 500 pounds, that would be 7,825 pounds today. 
So you could buy yourself like a Nissan Micra. That's nothing to shake <laughs> a stick at, man. That's true. New well, car. What was the 1960s version of that car, though? It was, uh, it was probably one of those weird things with three wheels. Whatever sad uh, Austin Mini. The, the Mor- a Morris Marina. Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> For one child killed in a spoil, you could have a Morris Marina. It's probably a British Leyland something or other from the, the coincidentally uh, NCB National Car Board. <laughs> There's probably an actual name for it. It took four years for them to come off the assembly line, but man, that was some craftsmanship. <laughs> so, Handmade uh, in Britain just means at some point that the wheels are going to fall off. Now, interestingly, in, in hearings in Parliament, Margaret Thatcher was a particular advocate for the village here and getting the spoil tips removed. You know, up until the point where the government would spend money on it, right? So the cost of removing the spoil tips was deducted from the victim's fund. Yeah, they were forced to pay it in contravention of uh, uh, British law. And the, co- and the charity commission, the group set up to prevent shit like that, just stood by and did nothing. So fucking absolutely terrific work there, folks. And then later in 19, 1989, uh, Margaret Thatcher closed the mine. So, you know. It thank started, you. That started Thanks. with Thatcher and ended with. Yo, this is crazy because. Hey, this happens, I'm back. Hey, Alice is back. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey we're about to just do historical materialism. You're yeah. here. Awesome. I love to do historical materialism. I also love to have uh, my power go out in the middle of recording a podcast. <laughs> well, that's what you get for relying on wind power. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's probably uh, probably Iranian is, uh, cyber terrorists. Yeah, that's true. You you can't, like, store power. So, folks, there's no wind. And when there's no wind, there's no power. It's very bad. What, what it was was off the coast of Scotland, some be- a beautiful, rare flock of birds not seen in that area for 50 years. <laughs> just flew in the wrong place. And just got totally. liquidated, just got completely destroyed, and that's why she lost power. Yeah, absolutely. So there's gonna be uh yeah. There's there's gonna be a gap in my recording uh at about like, I don't know, forty nine minutes in where I just like fucking die and then come back. Oh, so welcome back. Congratulations on oh, no, yeah, the resurrection. Absolutely. Everyone's gonna so, hear the rest of us milling around in confusion. So. <laughs> I talk about the fanfics, although I couldn't find them on my phone. So I'm oh, gonna no. have to get them back somehow. Oh, oh uh, should I, should I historical yeah. materialism? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Let's do historical materialism. Let's do it. So, like, so it's it's fascinating this story because we talked about the contradictions within this sort of Keynesian post-war consensus and how you had to have full employment. Um, you also had to have uh, some productivity gains at the same time. You had uh, kind of heterogeneous national economies where the heights of industry were nationalized for the national interest with this sort of like soft social democratic welfare state that existed at this time. And then, early on in 1966, when this disaster happens, killing all these kids, you have the siren who appears, Margaret Thatcher. And she is Uh. dealing directly with the effects of British state capitalism, right? Which, Mm -hmm. like, not directly, but at least indirectly, this entire edifice, this, this social economic edifice, kills all these fucking children. It's Margaret Thatcher, fucking 13 years before she comes to power, who steps into the breach as the harbinger of a new social order, of a new era of neoliberalism. So this is a very this event is very pregnant, pregnant with the future. As Margaret Thatcher destroys these the minor union, you know, 25 years after that, and eventually they reprivatize the mines and then they go away. So this is a perfect story, not just Brexit, but the entirety of neoliberalism. All right. Uh, hashtag, uh, no more historical materials. It's done now. It's done with it. <laughs> backslash, backslash historical materialism. Damn, yeah. I had some much more facile lessons to be learned here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you, you uh, wh- while I was dead, did you talk about them, uh, making the victims fund pay for cleanup? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Alice, that- <laughs> You're British. What do you? Is that normal there? What the fuck? Um, I think it sort of used to be like this kind of like uh, Britain is a dismal country, and so uh, our flirtation with socialism had to be tempered with 
absolute paternalistic dipshit cruelty. Uh, and so, yes, you can have a nationalized industry, but it will be the ne kind of nationalized industry that is like, oh, sorry, we killed your kid. Here's 50 pounds. Uh, <laughs> also, we're taking 25 of that back to pay for cleaning up the, you know, corpses. Ugh. Because we're, we're, we're piss picks. We're a nation of piss picks, and we love it. Um, yeah. Incidentally, how much is 50 quid in today's money? Oh, we gained it all out. Liam's got it. Yeah, it oh, was you do? like 782 pounds, I think. So, 782 it, pounds and 41 pence. Awesome. For a child. For a, yeah. for a dead child, yeah. Yeah, cool. You can buy, I don't know, what can you buy with 700 quid? You buy like a PlayStation? Uh, I, I, I said Xbox earlier, but yeah. yeah. Fucking console scum. <laughs> <laughs> You could you could not buy a good gaming PC with uh with with your dead child money. We had the Eagles Giants and now it's PlayStation Xbox. Oof. <laughs> Look, we can't say we cannot say PC gaming master race here. No. So I say PC gaming uh Soviet Socialist Republic. <laughs> um, <laughs> new Soviet gamer. Yeah, the new Soviet gamer. <laughs> Have you heard of this new game? Workers and Resources Soviet Republic? Boo! Just <laughs> ah. do a thing on that. <laughs> uh, I, I, try, I on tried that. that. I tried that, and I could not figure out power generation. So, in that respect, I was absolutely accurate about playing a <laughs> Soviet bureaucrat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was just like, why, why does number go up, but uh, power not happen? I, no, I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> Glad to be and, and then I just gave up, which is like yeah. sort of the equivalent of being reassigned to manage a shoe factory in Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> then the game got weird. Mm. I I worked with a uh, an ex Soviet man. He and his uh, his wife had emigrated, I think, in like ninety four or ninety five, and he was just a delight because every so often he would threaten our boss. But like he was like a physically imposing man. He was probably like six, seven, six, eight. And our boss would be like, oh, you know, whatever, productivity, dumb bullshit capitalism. And he would he would just stand over him and say, What do you say to me? And I and there was never a problem. <laughs> like, I was like, all right, yeah. Get his ass. <laughs> we should open up Russian immigration just so that every workplace in America can have one of those guys. Mm. That might help <laughs> us get state capitalism. <laughs> Nicest guy. We need to work our way up to this kind of state capitalism that kills your children. That's the sad yeah. part. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what Bernie yeah. Sanders is fighting for. That's, if only we yeah, had we, we had we had that choice with Corbyn, and we turned it down in favor of more privatization. If, if only mining disasters killed your children instead of being unable to afford insulin. <laughs> <laughs> I, t I tell you what, there is there is a silver lining to this, which is if your child dies, you save a lot on insulin. This that is true. Cool. Yes. My my favorite part about when we go to Canada is our inevitable like, yeah, I'm gonna go just buy a bunch of cheap insulin over the counter, in addition to goddamn mm. Tylenol one because it's still OTC there. Thanks, Canada. Hell yeah. See, if you brought the Russian guy over from the old Soviet Union. He could take that and turn it into crocodile for you. That's another oh. reason those guys are. Oh, the, 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 the reverse of this. Clean off my face. Yeah. The the reverse of this is that one of the silver linings of the destruction of the Soviet Union is that estradiol, uh, aka the pills what you take to make you transgender, are available over the counter in Russia. Boom. I Very know, nice. right? Yeah, you can just fucking pick up a whole fucking like stack of them. You want to be girl? You can be girl. <laughs> <laughs> Most efficient allocation of tips in like in the whole fucking world. Yeah. Who says incredible. communism doesn't work? Mm. Or the collapse of communism, or whatever the hell I'm talking about. It was the gains made by the Soviet Union, the historical gains that allowed Russia to have what it has today. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The absolute the best dash cam videos in the world. Uh, and it was the losses of uh, British social democracy that led to the losses of Britain today. That's true. Our dash cams are shit. Uh, 
It's it's just yeah. like two very red men trying to slap <laughs> each other, and then someone gets stabbed. It's dismal. Goddamn English. Yeah. Fucking English. All right. So I was gonna, I was gonna, I, I was gonna conclude by saying, you know, my less historical materials lessons from this, I guess, are, you know, maybe don't hold the thread of closure of the mine over your workers, um, because you know that may restrict them from saying maybe we should fix these safety issues mm. and i guess yeah even nationalized industries are subject to these pressures when you and when you run them like a, a a capitalist a state capitalist enterprise absolutely yep. yeah and you know don't concentrate all your health and safety efforts around the money making part of the business which you know very much is uh, what happened fun fact Fun fact, the um the head of the National Coal Board, the Lord we were talking about, his job in later life, his like sinecure that they gave him after this, was uh the inquiry that de like developed uh extant British health and safety law. And oh, yeah. It, yeah. So he it, failed it's, up. Yeah, he, he, he sort of him. invented self regulation where you would just like decide for yourself that your workplace was safe. <laughs> yeah. That was also what I was going to say. So yeah, it works. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. So self-regulation. Well, I I mean, all right. Uh, you can't argue with results. When was the last time a, a mine slide killed a hundred kids? Hmm. That is I mean, true. Next week. Yeah. Probably week. multiple can't times. And yeah, doing the sort probably, of tapping my temple and being like, can't have a mine slide disaster if there's no mines. Yes, you can you can outsource all your mine slide disasters to the third world. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a di look. Different places have different safety standards, and that's okay. Oh, it's Alice Iglesias over here. <laughs> <laughs> God, that that fucking column is like I don't know. Yeah. You you take psychic yeah. damage from thinking about it. That's all the, all the shit that they put uh, when they sent that satellite into space and they put all the nice music and the pretty pictures. They mm. should have just sent that Matt Iglesias article into space to let the aliens know who we really are. Yeah, although <laughs> like it's kind of fucked up that the the, um, the Voyager Golden Record has an introduction from the Secretary General of the UN who was a legit Nazi war criminal. Oh yeah. So oh, that's yeah, that's nice. yeah that's that's our like eternal. Um, like record of humanity as we fucking have this Nazi being like, hey, check out all of our cool cultural stuff. Klaus Barbie in space. Yeah. Here I was thinking to be Kissinger. <laughs> no, he's he, listen, he didn't become an Ameri he didn't become a worker until he got here, man. Mm. That's it's an the American land of success story. Yes. Yeah. Horatio Alger. Imagine if Kissinger ran the National Coal Board. I see no problem. <laughs> there would have been a lot more losses. That's all I yeah, gotta say. Bad because yeah. there's not enough death. <laughs> yeah, we have to expand the coal slide into neighboring villages. <laughs> that's that the only. Way, it's the only way we can defeat these villages is by like <laughs> spreading the coal. It's very safe. We only killed 100 kids. <laughs> <laughs> we we had to landslide the village in order to save it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that we've all been canceled for the thousandth time. Yeah. Yes. Bummer. Uh, Sorry, folks, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. We we but we hope you'll hold off on our cancellation long enough for our long enough for us to put out our next episode on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Of course. Of course. Finally. Hey, wait. Mm, yeah. And we've got a Patreon episode in the works too. We do have a Patreon be, episode. Uh, in the works. Liam's van, right? It is literally, yeah, gonna be my van. Yeah. Um, so that I'm in the process of writing that. Um, as well as talk about recording that, but yeah. So enjoy 45 minutes to an hour and a half of me just bitching and moaning about the L31 <laughs> engine. <laughs> van content, yeah. No, uh, it's gonna be great. Liam Anderson, man with van. Yeah, it's Liam mm -hmm. Anderson. See, <laughs> it all ties together. <laughs> Got him. Okay, um, well that's the end of the episode. Uh, who who wants to pitch stuff? Uh, listen to Trash Future. We have a podcast. It's very good. We have a Patreon too. 
Uh, we're doing. We're, we're calling this season two after we all got owned in the uh, the British Ooh. election. So, <laughs> yeah. time yeah. for a rebrand. New, new, yes, new year, new me. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen to Trash Future. It's one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, check out Justin's uh, excellent City Skyline shit on YouTube.com. Uh, listen to this podcast a lot, but then when you're not doing that. Listen to The Antifada, my podcast. You can find it wherever free podcasts are sold. I've got some exciting new history episodes with your friend Matt Crispin coming up very, very soon. You can follow me on Twitter.com, at Talented Voter. And uh, yeah, I'm hyped to be here. One of my favorite shows, this one as well. Oh, our pleasure. Uh, yes, thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye, going. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, all right. So I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. Uh, my name is Liam Anderson. Uh, I, by and large, am just an asshole in our YouTube comments and on our Twitter comments when you dumb fucks want to be transphobic and gross. Um, we are getting around to all the fucking episodes you people have mentioned, but Braz has to write them. I'm very sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, definitely go listen to Trash Future. It is an extremely good podcast. Uh, bring back the dead cast, I guess. Mm. Yes, <laughs> R.I.P. the dead cast. Oh, not dead. And just to be an asshole one more time, pronouns are he, him, suck a dick. Oh, yeah, she, her, I also, can't she, hose, die mad. <laughs> yeah. Also, he, him. Uh, I don't have to pitch anything because Sean did all the work for me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Distribution yeah. of labor, yeah. Hooray. I'm a good union man. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Now we can slack off, guys. It's yeah, a yeah. five-hour coffee break. <laughs> yeah, oh, we should also true. put in some sad coal mining songs in the YouTube description. Hmm. Mm. We should get some like we should we should fucking unionize podcasters. I want to be in an international brotherhood of something. That is so good. I I can't really dual card, but I'll help you form it. Yeah, I, you know what I want? I want one of those stickers you put on the hard hat that says like "Union motherfucker" and there's like a dog. Alice, yeah. I'll send you one. After yes. this, I your address. I'll send you a union motherfucker sticker for your heart. Yes, hat. please. <laughs> <laughs> Left unity is important. Yes. Hey, uh, power to the union, hey. <laughs> fuck ask it, ask me. me. It's your fucking, the fucking union. union. <laughs> it's the ask fucking me. union that works for you. Ask me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, er, er, is, that a, is that a podcast? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna uh, uh, bye, bye everyone. everyone. Bye. bye. <laughs> okay, bye. What do I do now? I hit stop recording and then I send it to you? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Stop.